Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So we got a new addition to the robot automation in the clean room here I'd like to show you. So let's take a look. So I've got a new addition to the robot automation set up in the clean room here. And it is this new controller, which some of you may have seen me fabricating. It, it used to be a Sony CD player, at least the box of it was. And what it does is it takes the inputs and outputs from Orange Robot, from the robot controller back there, and it displays the status of all the inputs and outputs using these ultra bright LEDs, like that one. <laughs> and the top row is a whole bunch of just 24 volt ports, uh, banana plugs. And then the bottom row, these black connectors are zero volt, so the ground for the DC power supply. I still have this external power supply, but I will be integrating the 24 volt power supply inside of this control module uh, whenever I have the next opportunity. And then, yeah, and of course down here is the original temperature controller, which used to be a Harman Kardon stereo system, which I gutted out and put all the temperature controllers in. So back to this interface, you can see that there is 16 inputs and 16 outputs labeled with multiple color banana jacks. And I've got all these banana plugs plugged in for the configuration of the robot, which is currently pulling parts and then talking to the white robot over here. And I can't show you the parts that they're working on at the moment, but that's what's happening. So some of these ports are outputs to the white robot and some of these ports are inputs from the white robot talking to orange. Other ports over here are the inputs and outputs for the molding machine, which you may be able to read that text uh, machine into the black anodize of the front panel. So some of these jumpers are basically just coming out of the molding machine inputs and outputs and then going into particular ports so that the molding machine and the robot can talk. And then you can see the status of everything. For instance, that red light means that side poles for that particular mold are engaged, so we can't open the mold until the white light is shown above. So we'll see that white light light up and the red light will turn off when the when the core pole pistons fire is now. So that white light just holds the molding machine that it can open its mold up. And then that green light told the robot that it could do it. The blue light means that the robot turned its gripper on. And then the go ahead to start is that green light for the molding machine to do its next cycle. It's happening now. Anyway, so it's pretty cool. It's a nice light display, but it also shows me what's happening real time instead of trying to look or dig up the, the I.O. port on the actual controller for the robot. I'll show you some footage of how this was made. Okay, time to assemble all of our little connectors on the front of this robot interface panel. So the top row is gonna be just power in, 24 volts, and the bottom will be the ground for the internal power supply, which in this case will be uh, black connectors. So I've just got a whole lot of these to populate, basically. Of course, now I gotta flip it without them all falling out. <laughs> it's okay Sierra. All right, then we got these these ring clamps, basically a very skinny circular nut with a castle castellated top. And we'll tighten all these down in the back of our machine. I might need to make a tool for this operation. So I will demonstrate the insertion of one of the last of these connectors. So put the housing through there. And then you gotta get the, this nut to basically start the, plastic, the start its thread 
It's like a metal machined thread that has to fit over an injection molded thread. And it almost always starts crooked. So you have to be very gentle with it to get it to start correctly. And here you can hopefully see that I've started that nut. I've got a little metal 1 16th wire that I use to spin this nut down. Of course, my hand's in the way. Like so. It seems if you put any side load on it, then it will jam up on its molded plastic threads. So it's kind of tedious to work with these things. But they were cheap and purchased on Amazon, so I think once they're in, we should be good. Actually, if I flick it, it seems like it wants to screw down faster. Oh, there we go. So we are, and then with this wire, I basically tighten the, the nut down and it's tight. So there we go. These are the two robot controllers that are working with our control box over there. And they're basically running through different scripts. The left one is for the white robot and the right one is for the orange robot. Now since these are very cheap plastic connectors, I have to submerge this entire front panel into a shallow pool of water to prevent the plastic bits on the front of this connector from melting when I solder the back wire on, which is a little bit of a frustration. So yeah, so all of these connectors are submerged in this water. And now we will wire the final two connectors in place, the blue ones, with the indicator LED and its signal wires to it as well. Actually, I need to put the last two LEDs in too. I can do that offline. I'm basically just shoving an LED into a hole that was drilled into the panel. And then I'm backfilling with some silicone adhesive, like caulk basically, just to keep the LED in there. Actually, two episodes ago, I showed how I machined the connectors in the back for this particular interface here. So I'm going to finish it up here, and then I've got two more coming for two more robots. And another temperature controller is being built as well for the big dual shot machine outside. So, hope you enjoyed. Getting your morning dates.